again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. Hi guys, I'm Carla Garrick. <sighs> allergies, allergies, allergies. Just gonna say it, just get it out of the way. My truck was covered in <laughs> pollen. That might have something to do with it. I had to break down and start mowing my lawn because this weather's been crazy. Usually I try to wait till the end of May. Yeah, I can't wait another two weeks. Uh, there was some grass I swear was a foot tall. There, there was some mowing happening at our house yeah. as well and we seeded just for anyone who is like, Oh, are you letting your garden go fallow? No, it's on purpose. So we seeded our entire lawn with clover. clover yeah, we didn't have very, knock on wood, I shouldn't say we didn't have very good luck. It didn't come in as dense as I wanted, I had hoped. Um, but I do feel like I have less. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing because I'm like, everything else in life is coming in more <laughs> dense than um, it needs well, to. Well, <laughs> I feel like what I call cow grass, which is the grass that grows circles like this, I feel like I have less of that. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, don't know. the birds are happy. The birds, you know, I wake up super early in the morning, but the 333 bird that's uh, right outside my open window, I was like, birdie bird, can you chill? So I'm going to try a new, new structure. I always wake up around 3.30, and then I go back to sleep, and then I'm usually yeah. up around 5.00. And I was like, why don't I just start getting, getting up, up at 3.30 and, and maybe, and, you maybe know. Maybe go to bed a half an hour early. Maybe you don't have to. Maybe I, you're or, not. you know, maybe uh, nap time is right. right. <laughs> the thing that is going to be in this gray-haired lady's future. Um, I know <laughs> you wanted to talk a little bit about the YDC thing. Let's get that. Yeah, so so, that. Uh, so for folks who've been following along on the show, there's this massive scandal brewing in New Hampshire uh, that has to do with the Sununu Child Center here in Manchester on the east side. Huge property that uh, probably is going to be sold to some developers, you know, like, so there's a whole economic arm that's really interesting. But basically, they are bringing cases now against the state. The AG is defending Health and Human Services who are somehow involved in this. And I was like, oh, that's interesting because you would think it would be correctional services. But no, anyway. it's definitely, because why do you, yeah, no, it's not part of the correctional, pro, it's part of like um, youth and family services. Right, no. so, so, so a, an area where there is a lot of maybe inadvertent corruption, but definitely corruption, including in New Hampshire, your children can be taken away from you without due process, meaning there's no claims, there's no court, there's no uh, discovery, there's really no process uh, in, in the CDC or the, the Child Protective CPC world, and, and that kind of shocked me. So last week we talked about the fact that there's this hundred million dollars that has been allocated by the legislature for uh, awards. Yes. Then uh, it came out that in the first case, which is kind of interesting, uh, they went after this guy really hard. The jury awarded him thirty-eight million dollars. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, the judge was like, uh-uh, it's limited to, I forget what it was, 375? 475. 475, right? So they're saying there is a cap on what awards can be given to people per incident at 475. Yeah. So in the decision, they did not tell or instruct the jury about this cap. So when they brought their award back, they actually said, hey, there was one incidence and we're giving $38 million. Now it turns out, because of this cap, there were actually 200 incidences well, and, yes. for this one person, yes. right? And I didn't do the math, but I'm going to assume that's also probably more than $38 million. Uh, it's a lot. And, um, and now the state is saying, uh, actually, we just think the statute of limitations applies. Yeah, I saw that. I thought that was weird. And I'm like, what now? Well, I mean so, so, but Tammy, think about it, right? So, so, first of all, let's just all stand back and look at it objectively. Something really terrible yes. happened to children yes. under the ward of the state. Yes. That is heinous, and we need to do something about it, right? for people to have to go and testify on these terrible things that happened to them is not fun. No. So for the state to actually be like, hey, we're gonna put you in court, we're gonna force you to testify, we're gonna make you relive all this stuff, uh, we're gonna allow the people who are 
uh, the alleged uh, perpetrators of this to plead the fifth, but not in front of the jury, because that might like make them look bad. Uh, so that is like sort of punting towards or supporting the state position. Um, and then to say, well, actually, now we've thought about it after you've testified, after you've gone, now we're going to say, oh, you know what? The statute of limitations, a technicality is going to come into play. So it's like we hurt these people, and now we're the state, and we get to write the rules, and so, now we're just going to backdoor this excuse in to be like, well, we hurt you. We heard you. Tough luck. So one of the things I did read, which I don't disagree with you. However, one of the ways of things I read, whether I agree or not is irrelevant, is that the state is now saying, based on the testimony provided by the victim or by witnesses, that this individual victim, the man, knew, was, it, was fully aware and fully comprehended and fully knew well before, well outside of the scope of the um, time frame. So I, I get what you're saying, but I'm just saying, so playing devil's advocate, the prosecution says, Okay, there's a, what, what's the word I want to say? What's the time frame thing called? Uh, a window, statue statute of limitations. Statue of limitations, sorry, I was just trying to. So the statute of limitations, I don't know what the number is. Let's just say it's. Well, right. so in this case, basically, in, I guess in 2017, he became aware of stuff. They filed in 2010, I mean, 2020, what? during COVID, yeah. when the courts were closed. By the way, I'm now just catching up on. I mean, we are so behind no, with I'm the not, legal that's system. Not what I was, I'm just going to use a hypothetical number. Let's say the statute of limitations is four years. I don't, it doesn't matter what the number is because it is whatever it is. If in 2017, when he f decided to file, right, when he became aware. Tell me, I understand that, the, yes, technically there's a statute of limitations. Well, These are the rules. I get it, right? But the point is... So but, are we actually trying to fix a harm or are we just going to play games? I, I agree, but then on the, if we were on the, if, if. Oh, if, what, if we're on the side of the people who manage the people who no, rape no, the children? I'm no, I'm, I'm going to say you have to apply the same standards to every case. So let's take a case where um, somebody gets arrested and the police um, take their possessions and they've got video recordings or whatever. And the statute of limitations has not has not expired. And I mean, we just have to apply the same court standards, unfortunately. Well, they don't, see? So that is part of the problem as well. Like, there is really no rule of law. I hate to break it to you folks. Anyway, so I went to look up okay. the judge a little bit so because I found it interesting. And I understand why sometimes as a spokesperson, my name gets dragged into other people's crap and nonsense and stuff. So I noticed, I was like, oh, they never mention who the judge is. They say the judge in this case, but they never say judge so-and-so. So, -and -so. so mm. I was like, who is the judge? So the judge is Andrew Shulman. He's from Bedford. He was appointed in 2014 by Hassan when she appointed three or four, two or three judges to the Superior okay. and District Courts, okay? He was from a law firm called Getman. Schuller and Steele, I believe, which I was like, oh, okay, I've never heard of them, which yeah. is either a really good sign or a really bad sign. And then I was looking up, you know, he was an assistant professor at Franklin Pierce, all of this. And so far, uh, you know, he actually has come out on some, some sort of, I don't know if I would say entirely pro-liberty, but I looked at yeah. some of the decisions and I was like, okay. okay, this guy looks like he at least might want to get to the heart of justice, mm -hmm. right? Because that's also something we lose sight of what we're trying to accomplish, right? The more rules we write, then it becomes technically are we sticking to the rules and we've written so many rules that it is actually a codified form of insanity. And it's like, but why do we have these rules? Why, like, why do we have courts? Why do we have judges? Why do we have these things? And it's actually to get to justice, mm -hmm. to get to something that is just. So if people have been harmed, we want to actually make them whole or fix that harm to the extent we can. And I think people need to keep that in mind because we've been inundated with the gains of it that we lose sight of, like, why are we doing this? So I'm going to keep an eye 
on this case. It is I, interesting. I, I mean, there is a lot of, there are a lot of moving pieces and a lot of things besides just the victim and the, I mean, there is a lot of, there's always a lot of moving parts for those of us who are inquisitive and know a little bit about, enough about the system to be able to see the moving well, parts. Well, also, I mean, I, I couldn't find the newspaper article was, I couldn't find the one I read this morning. It must have been somewhere else in the house. So I grabbed the wrong pile. But I believe there are over 2,000 cases. Oh, I is that, I, I, that I, sounds, I don't recall that if it's cases like a lot, but or incidents, but also 2,000. Not if this one guy has 200, well, right? That's what I'm saying, but that still would be. So, so I mean, I don't know, I don't know if it's, so I, I will I, look I, that yeah, up and know. come back or I'll put it in the show like a notes. a lot of individuals. Is it though? How many years was this? Wasn't I don't this know. over 30 years? So 2,000 kids over 30 years when know. people are getting away with it mm -hmm. in a system that might actually attract people with bad, mm -hmm. you know, yep. interests to do things. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's... I, I did, uh, what I printed is not what I, I did read something. <laughs> you also didn't bring the well, right no, paperwork. I brought this, but this is not, I brought, oh. that's not what I'm looking for. So I didn't bring the printout of what I wanted to talk, mention, but I did find it interesting. So I was reading an article um, on Manchester Ink Link this morning, and it was from, um, it was about Edelblue and how Edelblue came to the school board meeting to discuss the proposed minimum school standards um, and how that, you know, because there's concern. And he's like, and from what I know of Frank Edelblue, he's willing to go talk to just about anybody. You, and whether you agree with him or not, he'll go and tell you, here's the thing, here's the data, here's what we're doing, no secrets, no things. And he had an interesting quote in the article and I read it and I thought, I don't understand how people don't understand this. This is what he said. We set out decades ago to be on a path I refer to as a competency-based approach, which really recognizes not that students have spent time in school and having done their time, they move on. You're doing time in school, you well, really right? are. <laughs> but to make sure that we give them the opportunities and the skills that they need while they are in school so that when they exit our system, they can be successful in whatever their lives may entail. And I thought, how do people not get that? That it does not serve the children of our state, beyond our state as well, um, to just keep them in a building and provide them with crappy educational choices just because, just because. And so these are the programs that have been introduced during uh, Frank's time, which honestly, you know, he, I, if I remember correctly, like his background is business. Wasn't he a software yeah, guy? He's, he's very data driven. Yeah. He's like very innovative and like, hey, let's make things better. Right. Everyone's like, no, because how dare you? Because sometimes the best people to tackle addressing a new problem is somebody who's a little bit more removed exactly right because then also you don't have those special interests i mean part of special interests is people are like super invested yes. in their oh my position. god yes even i'll tell you this even people on the side of i believe on the same side of education as me then they start hating on everything because it's not perfect. And you're like, I'm okay with not perfect. So see, this is what I think the problem is. <coughs> I think we are at the stage where everyone has been programmed in some way to be like, I'm right. Like the stakes, yeah. you know, and and, and I sometimes think it, we're not all right. Well, the thing is just also like, so what if you're right? You know what I mean? Right. It's, is it, it's, it, 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 Okay, good for you. You get a silver or, star or, for that day. I mean, I don't know how it is in your household, but like Louie and I like to argue, right? Yeah. And and you know, you know, I'm married to Dan. <laughs> he doesn't argue, right? You know this. Oh, well, you know, um, but it's it's so interesting because I've really been studying that dynamic, right? And I was like, hey, why don't we try instead of being like one of us has to be right? Yep. Let's just have conversations See? again, right? Yes. Like just. Be like, yeah. what What do you think? Yeah. What do you yeah. think, right? Like the stakes, and it's because government's too big. Because everyone's like, I'm fighting for the spoils, yeah. right? Like it's like, I gotta take it. So with the Frank thing, 
you know, so the competency base was basically like, hey, if you go do, I don't know, like a plumbing thing, an NHTI, or if you uh, do scouting. Learn or, anywhere, I think you know, it's called. That's right, right? So if you go do other stuff where you're immersing in a life right. skill. It doesn't have to be in the school building. You can get points for that. I don't know if it was on your feed or on a different one. People were like going nuts because <laughs> everyone was unhappy. I agree yeah. with you. Like people from the school choice I was, movement. I, it wasn't in this particular post. But what was telling to me, now keep in mind, I'm from New York State originally. My ex-sister-in-law taught um, elementary school in a public school system um, in the Albany area of, of, of New York for her entire career. She went to school to be a teacher. She just recently retired. So she's probably spent, you know, what, 35 years or 30 years or whatever teaching elementary school to the best of my knowledge. She was the first person to comment on that post and said, we have gotten so far away from this. And I'm pretty sure she's a Democrat and she was a teacher in New York State. And I know another teacher from New York State and they'll say the same thing. You know, like what they went to school to do is not what teachers are forced to do now. Which is why, Which I is why the kids aren't learning because they're not, teachers aren't even allowed to teach anymore. But I'm also like, this is my appeal to teachers then. Why don't the teachers start to go, actually the unions and the administrators and the people making triple what I'm making aren't actually acting in my personal best interest. Me, teacher, would like the kids to read and write but maybe. But you know I what know. it is? It's pensions. So if you have got if you've got 15 years in and your your pension is dependent on you just sticking it out and doing the best you can with the awful scenario, that's what's happening. So it's is, unfortunate. Is that it's bribery, extortion, it's corruption. Like, Which it's, one is it's, that? It's, is it's it, one um, of them. It's not good. It's not healthy. It's. Well, it's not, right? Because it's basically. It's not good for the teachers. It's not good for the students. It is good for the unions. And, you know, and the, they, do, they um, do make a lot of money. So another thing, and I notice I think you have similar things, and I found, I just find it interest, not interesting, not surprising, but just relevant. Uh, there's a New York Times article. New York Times had a recent presidential uh, poll, and um, numbers have not changed since last November. <laughs> <laughs> um, Trump is still winning in um, five out of six key swing states um, over Biden. Um, the the hard part now, the person I was listening to did not, I think she was from NPR actually, and I was it was interesting to watch her because I did not feel like she was leaning towards Biden in the in this video we watched. Um, she w kept pointing out in the article that I read said the same thing. Um, where they're seeing the biggest change in voter identity is in young people and in blacks and Hispanics. And at one point, one of the poll numbers show that Trump probably is garnering 20% of black and Hispanic votes. And anybody who does math probably can tell you the Democrats cannot win if the Republicans take 20% of the black and Latino votes. Right, and then... It's I, just math at that point. And honestly, we talked about this a little bit last week, but, you know, Trump and uh, RFK are both going to be speaking at the yep. Libertarian Convention at the end of the month in D.C. Vivek has also yep. said he's going to come. I was going to say, come. there's a third one, Vivek. So here's the interesting thing, because I went and looked at the numbers a little bit, right? So... People sometimes say, oh, the LP is just a spoiler, right? And and that's criticism. I don't think it's fair. I think everyone's allowed to vote their I conscience. Agree. Everyone's allowed to do what they want. If you can't win on strength of your candidate, you're not allowed to blame other people because you failed, you know what I mean? But I did go look up the numbers, and, and in 2016, and I voted LP in 2016, mm -hmm. Gary Johnson, who was, you know, the, the governor from New Mexico with Bill Weld, who is not a libertarian by any stretch of the imagination for anyone who's criticizing the current, uh, you know, lineup or having Trump and all these people. Bill Weld was probably less Republican than libertarian than Trump, maybe even. Anyway, so in 2016, they got 4.5 million votes. Yeah. It's by far the best the LP has ever done. And they got 3.3% of the national popular vote. 
Uh, why is that important? Because that means there are 4.5 million people that I should be targeting to move to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project, but that's a different conversation. Then Joe Jorgensen, who ran in 2020, yep. Um, I switched my vote, actually. I did vote for Trump, which I find interesting, too, because I talk to a lot of libertarians, you know, and Everybody. everyone I know voted for LP in 2016 and, and voted then, for Trump in 2020, yep. which then makes it very suspicious. Well, I don't think it makes it suspicious. That, I think a case was, to, I think that the, the fear factor was there more. There's no way in hell we're taking this guy. We'll, I'll, I'll vote for Trump. Too. Well, but it is. But that also means an entire block came over to Trump, which begs the question: Why did he lose? Oh, that. Do you know what I mean? The case. Yes. Because well. um, so, so what people are saying about the spoiler in uh, was that if uh, if it had not been for the LP, Arizona, Georgia, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin would have gone to Trump. So I think that is very interesting. These stats come from an article that was in today or yesterday's Boston Globe by a Jeff Jacoby. Jacoby. Okay. Um, so that's a, it's a good read. It was interesting. It. It's sort of you know talking about these different uh, groups, like you know who's yeah. trying to do what, yeah. who's trying to get what edge here. Um. But I think Trump's playing smart, and I, I think RFK well, is playing so smart. In this, in Again, the, I in, want them to run in this, together. Um, <laughs> in this New York Times article. I just thought this was interesting because this is the part that we, I mean, if you're inside politics, if you play in the political world, I mean, this is not anything new. This is this what we've been, I've been saying all along. Um, and I'm not privy to some super secret anything. It's just, I can see, sometimes you can just see political stuff for what it is. Um, findings are mostly unchanged since the last series of polls in um, these battleground states in November. Since then, the stock market has gained 25%. Mr. Trump's criminal trials, which stop calling him Mr. Trump, he's President Trump because everybody who has been president is always president. Trump's criminal trial in Manhattan has started and the Biden campaign has unleashed tens of millions of dollars in advertisement across these battleground states. If you can't get headway, I mean, we're, we're, we're going to have to unleash the aliens. There's going to have to be aliens, and that's going to be the only way Biden's going to win. It's, it's just, it's going to have to be some absolutely insane I something. mean, I have some theories. I might save them for a late night conspiracy <laughs> talk on, you know, maybe some internet podcast or something. But, yeah, this is going to be, an, it's going to be interesting because they have, the Democrats actually have a problem, too, because they should have, you know, like they're well, going after RFK so hard that like they can't even they, do that. No, like, and, you and know, sort of thing. And that's a mistake. Not surprising in this poll and just not surprising in general. As much as, you know, as much as the leftist um, progressive Democrats would have you believe that abortion is still the number one issue in this country, I will tell you most people could care less. It's not that they don't care less, but it is not what's setting I, I mean, the tone. I, what is, what, even this article. I mean, the economics are going to set the, the tone. It is the economy and the inflation. People cannot, people can't afford life. That's the reality. Right. Groceries are expensive. Everything is expensive. So they can tell you something, the perception, and then you go shopping, and that's the reality. Yeah. And what they we are keep currently telling you things seeing are great and all this stuff. is this. They are yeah. lying to us, but more people are waking up because they realize, oh, you know what? You're telling me one thing, but I just had to fill my gas exactly. tank. Exactly. And that you is know, when you utter have to nonsense. Put, when, when, uh, yeah, gas is like $3.40 if you're lucky. What happened, remember back when Trump got elected? Remember when Trump was president and gas was like $2, Two yeah. a gallon? Yeah. And, you know, eggs were still 99 cents and butter was still 2 bucks a pound. And, you know, you could buy lettuce for under $3 and all these things. And yet the Democrats would have you believe. Now it's better. That things are better somehow. You that know. somehow this is better. I, I don't know what part of life they think has improved. So you know what's not better? Uh, just because we're, we're recording now, uh, there was an assassination in Slovenia, no, I think Slovakia, some one of those. Slovakia, uh, so which is half, half of, of Czechoslovakia. So the prime minister, was, there was an attempted assassination. He is in very serious condition. Oh, I thought he was... 
the ho well, last I saw, he was in critical condition at the hospital. This was a prime minister who was, uh, I mean, by the words of the internet, pro-Putin, uh, maybe just pro-peace or, you know, like trying to be like, hey, maybe there's a better solution than just murdering all these young people for no good reason. Um, and he was oh, against right. aid to Ukraine. And so for students of history, the name for Franz Ferdinand might mean something yeah, that, to you. That's what I, you know it's not I know, just a you know cool bed. That? <laughs> that was a question in Trivial trivia Pursuit, and it was one of the only history questions that I would ever get right. <laughs> that and one time when I played, every time I answered something, I said John F. Kennedy. I don't know. Like, who, <laughs> went, blah, 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 who was the first man? I don't know, John F. Kennedy. And then the one question that came up, that the answer was John F. Kennedy, I said something different. Oh, no. So you remember it that. It's, it's, it's why I remember but that there are four golf balls on isn't the that, moon. Isn't that one of like, the things you remember? That's the story they told us. Oh, so he anyway, is alive. He's hospitalized. You're right. So, uh, you know, the question begs to be asked, is this What's now, like, who, who would benefit, right? right? Kibono, who benefits if this someone tried to assassinate this world leader? Who benefits based on what we know from past history? Um, it usually is like someone who's like, hey, let's start a world war. And I don't know who these nuts are who think this is a good solution. A good but of solution. course, the elites and the powers that be profit from war. And the economy is really bad and the dollar is probably about to crash. And so if they can usher in war, perhaps you would be distracted by that, you know, by conscription, oh. your family dying, all these things. Terrible harm and hurt for no good reason. So we'll keep an eye on that story um, as shameless well. Shameless plug, uh, Victoria Sullivan's having a fundraiser on May 28th at the Hill at McIntyre. You can buy your tickets at victoriasullivan4nh.com. I also wanted to comment that the apartment buildings on the street are looking quite nice. They're adding brick to them, which nice. makes them fit in better and, uh, and for and those who were concerned. It's across from the market basket yep. on Elm Street yep. is what so, we're pointing um, at. Yeah, that's it. Uh, still, still in weekly yard waste pickup, at least through this week. Um, I'm not confident that it doesn't switch to every other week starting next week. But, um, you know, if you're cleaning up your yard and you got leaves and twigs and sticks and all that stuff, um, put them out to the curb. The city will pick them up with your trash. Put it out to the curb. All the bad energy. Let's try and be like lead with happiness and love instead of yep. all this nastiness yep. and pain and violence yep. and hate. We can do better, folks. Cool. See you next week. Bye.